In this chapter, I'll take you through the evolution of motors and drive units. Well, in the strictest sense, evolution means a gradual development of something. Humans have evolved on this planet after living for thousands of years. We have adapted over these years and the progress has been gradual. There have been quantum leaps in the human history as well. Man learning to make fire, invention of wheel, from the earliest of ages to the most recent of the events of a man setting foot on the moon to the invention of computer and the internet. Electric cars might possibly be one of the defining moments in the history of mankind. The technology in itself has been in existence since a long time, dating back even to the combustion engines. Just that the economics of oil worked better and the rest is history. Well, that's me being guilty of oversimplifying things. But the essence of the point being that a car with its prime mover being an electric motor is not a new concept. All the early attempts of electrification were most, mostly hybrids in whatever format be it series, parallel, PHEVs, etc. Thus, the sizes of motors used were never exorbitant values we heard today. It was always assisting. It was always secondary. The motors used to range somewhere around uh, 5 to 20 kilowatt, uh, mostly DC. Controlling a DC motor with its power source being a DC, uh, that is your battery, will always be easier. Relatively easier methods of PWM based controls were adapted. The Japanese strategy was always hybrid first and then gradual change and then going on full throttle to be EVs. The Europeans were at arm's length away from EVs. The Americans were somewhere in between. We had our very own cute little Reva Electric as well, a great leap for India in technological sense, but its, never, uh, but its numbers never made business sense. Out of this changed when a guy who had recently sold an internet based payments company and was planning to land on Mars someday sooner than later, thought that he needed to make electric cars sexy. They are not the options anymore. They are here to stay and here to rule. Tesla's Roadster was aimed at making the world look and take notice that electric cars are everything you don't think they are, fast, efficient and sexy. Model S made us realize that these can be productionable as well and thus DC motors, a lower weight to power, power to weight ratio did not make them ideal candidates for performance matters. Thus, DC motors are gradually on their way out. AC motors are introduced, taking into account their more complex control strategies. But AC uh, for the same AC motors for the same power delivery are lighter and more compact. They are more efficient as well. The current trend can clearly see predominantly two types of motors, the good old induction motors and the PMSMs, permanent magnet synchronous motors. Induction motors have, been, have seen evolution from wound rotors to squirrel cage and conduction bar rotors. Induction motors are generally uh, less efficient than its PMSM counterparts. While PMSM as a motor, uh, as a concept has always existed, but was not feasible owing to the materials for the magnets. These materials were heavy and thus rendered difficult to use in rotors. They were very costly as well. Higher weight rotors meant more rotating mass, higher moment of inertia. It will take more power to start rotating and more power for braking as well, thus beefing up the entire system. But thanks to the recent developments in material science and the advent of neodymium based magnets, stronger magnets have become lighter and cheaper. Thus these have now been placed in rotors to create permanent magnetic fields. Thus, with no copper loss uh, in the rotor, the efficiency bumps up even further. Induction motors are generally used in applications which are performance oriented. They are traditional gas guzzlers of the EV. One more trend has evolved and that has been of consolidation of parts of drivetrain. Early motors used to be standalone units with a separate gearbox attached to provide reduction. Gradually, we started to have consolidated units which houses motors and the gearboxes together. Nowadays, we have drive units which accommodates the motor 
its controller and the gearbox as well in the single housing and as we go ahead uh, we'll have even more consolidation and more compact motors also motors based on switch reluctance are under experimentation so this was a brief summary for electric powertrain and especially motors and how they have evolved